I had a chance to play Assassin's Creed Mirage early, and here is my review. We are playing as Basim ibn Ishaq, Basim ibn Ishaq, in 9th century Baghdad and surrounding areas. So not only the city, but also the wilderness. Before diving deeper, quick spoiler warning, there might be some spoilers, but nothing major, I promise you that. So be aware if you don't want to see absolutely any spoilers, don't watch anything regarding Assassin's Creed Mirage before you have played this yourself. Still here? Good. Let's go. Quick basic info about the game. So I was playing version 1.001.000, the very first version without updates. As you can see, my latest update for the game was 27th of September 2023, but don't worry, the first update should be there for launch, also the second patch shortly after the launch. And the size of the game was approximately 32.12 gigabytes. Also, the game will have microtransactions in it. Also, it seems like we are getting, like every Ubisoft game, the reward section over at Ubisoft Connect with challenges, core challenges of the game, maybe with some time limited challenges as well. I'm not sure about that, not just yet, but we will have to wait and see. In AC Mirage, we will learn so much about Basim and his journey throughout the ranks of the Hidden Ones. As Ubisoft has promised, Assassin's Creed Mirage is much more story-driven linear game than for example Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Odysseus or Origins. From those three games, I would actually say Mirage is closest to the Origins, as Eivor and Cassandra or Alexios, it was more or less hack and slash in Mirage, hack and slashing will be near impossible, of course some of you are gonna try it. The main things will be parkouring, being stealthy and of course taking out your targets via assassinations. As I already showed, I got the platinum trophy for this game already and overall experience from my perspective, this was so pleasant and I'm gonna give the score right away. I would say from scale 1 to 10, Assassin's Creed Mirage would actually be placed around 8.5 out of 10 and why it is so high the story it was really easy to follow the story was really enjoyable the main story will be focusing on basim journey and taking out the members of the ancients so much was brought back from the older Russian creed games like the hiding spots improved parkouring of course the tools like throwing knives blowing tarts and smoke bombs that are really easy to and fun to use and definitely you should use those as often as possible because it is making everything much more fun. One thing that is actually dropping the points a little bit, at least for me, also in this early access as well in the previous session in early September 2023, the close combat, melee combat, it was feeling a little bit clunky, chunky, however you want to say it. And what I mean by that, I actually did feel the controllers for parrying, for light and heavy attacks, wasn't as responsive as they were outside of the conflict. And hopefully that is something that is gonna be fixed, because after that even the melee combat will be much smoother and much more fun. I played before the release date, so there is no patches or anything like that. So some bugs, glitches were expected. If the melee combat is fixed, I would say this game is definitely solid 9 out of 10. Other than a little bit unresponsive, clunky combat system, at least for now, I didn't experience any major bugs or glitches and I was actually surprised by that fact. I was honestly expecting much more bugs, crashes, and speaking about the crashes, my game actually did crash twice. Crashing for the very first time, it was to the corrupt system, corrupted saves, here's a screenshot, and no, I didn't delete the game. Thus far, I haven't had any more problems like this. The second time I was crashing, it was totally on me because I did fill up my console storage. So, second one, totally on me. The first one, that was on the game. Thankfully, I didn't lose any progression that was made so far. Simply rebooting the game. And like I said, no further problems with that one. Of course, there were some bugs with the NPCs. Not many, but few. Like this guy on the boat, I don't know what he was doing, how he ended up like this, but yeah, even these were rare and few. So, the game is pretty polished, it is 
really enjoyable to play. Didn't feel like Valhalla, of course the controls being almost the same. Yeah, I would say this game, even though it is not the AAA game, it should be. And I really hope Ubisoft Bordeaux will make a DLC for this quote unquote DLC. Because I would love to see more story related stuff in Assassin's Creed Mirage. Without spoiling too much, there is so much to the story that could be added, so fingers crossed. And let me know in the comments down below, are you gonna play this, are you gonna skip it, are you gonna wait discount sales or something, let me know. I'm really keen to hear what you are thinking about the game, based on all the reviews, including this one, the gameplay we have seen so far. And if you want to see more Mirage videos just like this one, or even better, remember to smash the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you won't ever miss anything. And of course, to help me out, help this video out, remember to smash the like button down below, taking only a split second for you, so it would be much appreciated. But let's keep going with the video. And of course we have to talk about the graphics. Yes, they are almost the same, if not exactly the same, they were in Valhalla. Well, we know Assassin's Creed Mirage has been built with the same engine as Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Also, this game was supposed to be a DLC for Valhalla. Regardless, I would say this is still its own game. The devs actually made a really good job with this game tweaking around with the gameplay aspects like improved parkour, stealth. They added so much to the stealth. Like the rooftop hiding spots, tents on the ground, bench assassinations and so much more. Also the city of Baghdad, it is really good place to parkour with the multiple different levels from ground to the top of the roofs and edges of the walls. I know I'm not the best parkourer out there. I'm trying my best, but after three RPG titles, my parkouring skills have been slowly decreased. So I know that, you know that. I'm just telling you guys what is in the game. And while we are talking about the environment and mechanics of the game, I really love the fact how much details have been put into the game. For example, sand just blowing with the wind, like really realistically. It is super nice detail, I'm not sure how this is gonna look on old gen consoles, on the current gen, at least with the PlayStation 5 that I'm using to play this game. Sand blowing, leaves rubbing or flying around the air, that is almost breathtaking, I'm not gonna lie. I really love those small little details that can be overlooked so easily. But yeah, I appreciate the effort. The graphics overall looked pretty good in my eyes. Even though I don't have a 4K TV, they were still pretty impressive. But only thing that bothered me, and that thing is actually fixable with the updates. The version I played didn't have any updates at all. At least I didn't have any patch notes whatsoever. But somehow Basim's mouth didn't move after certain cutscenes. While we got to the bridge, from graphics, to the plot, yeah, the base story, the plot, it was really easy to follow and skip like 10 to 30 seconds ahead if you don't want any spoilers. Alright, still here, nice. You can actually choose which order members you are going after first. We have in total 5 of members of the ancients. Of course the last one, it is gonna be always the last one, but 4 of them are linked to the hidden one spiros around the Baghdad. Totally depends where you are going because even with the recommended ranks you can still go into the higher ranks even if your rank is apprentice you can still go into the hidden one spiro that is higher rank than that and start the quest. So it doesn't matter in which order you are gonna do the order members. Just have fun and I would say it is still pretty easy to follow the story no matter which quest you are starting or doing first. So this is definitely not like in Valhalla, where the story or the members was kinda like... Well, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, it was a mess. But this game, in my opinion, has really good structure, the story-wise. So it is definitely not the messy storyline that was in Valhalla. Some story arcs in that one didn't even feel like they are necessary to the game. If you agree, remember to smash the like. 
the characters in Awesome Grid Mirrors, from main characters, from Basim, to the other main characters, even to the lowest filler NPCs in the world, made actually this game so beautiful, in my eyes, even the NPCs are pointing you out to the guards when you are doing something wrong, like deep fuck hitting, looting some stuff from around the people, they are actually gonna point you out, and the guards are actually coming for you. So, that was kinda new to me. Well, not quite, but I think I know that you know where I'm going with this one. But definitely that made the game environment so much more immersive, enjoyable in my opinion. Yes, we will have microtransactions in the game with outfits, weapons, and yes, the only weapons we can use are daggers, swords, hidden blade, unfortunately hidden blade cannot be used in melee combat, only in the assassinations. So, that is unfortunate fact, but I can live with it, knowing the fact this was supposed to be a DLC for Valhalla, it makes sense in that regard. In the launch, we will actually have three different helix packs, one is only for weapons, one is with the mounts, and Jin one, that is absolutely my favorite from these three. It is looking absolutely amazing, but unfortunately, I didn't see Reda or anybody like that in the game. So the microtransactions are not obtainable without using real money. And that fact, I'm not sure, because I still have really bad memories from Valhalla with the Reda. When I was trying to get like gear pieces or anything through him, let's not talk about Reda or this will turn into rant and not a review. The game can be completed to the 100%, I would say 20 hours, 25 hours, if you know what you are doing, or maybe even less. It took me like 31, 32 hours or so in order to get platinum trophy and after that every collectible that I was still having in my inventory. Also I did find a secret thing in this game and I will be sharing it later on with the future videos, so don't miss out. I really wanted to answer in the most simple terms few questions. Did I enjoy the game? Absolutely yes. Will I replay Assassin's Creed Mirage again? Most definitely yes, even without the new game plus, which I actually hope Ubisoft will add for this game. That will be a huge increase, because we didn't get one in Valhalla and I'm still a little bit salty about that. Also, I really loved some of the gear we are having in this game. You can actually get some gear just playing the game from the quests. Also, you can buy one outfit from the vendor. Most of the gear you will get from the gear chests that are located around the map. Certain areas will have the certain gear. It doesn't matter which chest you are open because you are first gonna get gear. After that, you are gonna get the upgrade schemes. So in order to upgrade them, Getting different benefits, well, upgrading the benefits. For example, if something is level 1, 5%, you upgrade it once, 10%, and after that, the last upgrade, 15%, for example, for something. But I really hope for more free gear later on after the launch, because there will be more helix sets. So I really don't want to see this game turning into the Valhalla in that regard where we have 50 and 50. 50% 50 from playing the game and 50% or over for buying stuff. I really don't like that ratio like at all. Thus far, I really enjoyed the game. Can't wait to share more with you guys. Easter eggs, gameplay. Of course, I'm gonna do some guides for this game. I'm trying to live stream from start to finish with you guys and I'm really hopeful for future of Awesome Grid and Awesome Grid Mirage to be exact. This game will be definitely a good starter if you are starting Awesome Creed series from this game. It has old and new mechanics, little bit something for everybody and let me know your exact thoughts about the game in the comment section down below.